Hi, welcome to another episode of Cold Fusion. We all know about electric cars, but what about the electrification of other modes of transport? In today's episode, we'll cover two breakthroughs in electric transportation, the world's largest electric plane from Sweden and a neat little electric boat from Australia. To gain more insight into this topic, I'll be sitting down with Josh Portlock, a mechatronics and aerospace engineer and investor in electric transportation. So let's get straight into it. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. Now, electric planes have been around for a while, but they've basically always been small and light aircraft. The problem with them is that they can't travel too far. The further the distance, the larger the battery and the heavier the aircraft. A Swedish company by the name of Hart Aerospace is setting out to change all of that. The Swedish aviation company is to test the world's largest electric aircraft this year. Its name is the Hart X1. Unveiled back in September, it's an experimental platform for their planned production regional aircraft, the ES-30. The Hart X1 is a decent sized bird. It's got a wingspan of 32 meters or 105 feet. It can carry up to 30 people, has a range of 800 kilometers or 497 miles. But this maximum range is only reached when there's 25 or less passengers. For reference, the record for the furthest electric plane flight is 155 miles or 250 kilometers. And that was by the Chinese firm Gen4 Prosperities with their VTOL aircraft in 2023. The previous record for an all-electric flight was extremely close, 154.1 miles or 248 kilometers, and that was by a Californian company, Joby Aviation, in 2021. So how is the Hart X1 getting 800 kilometers? Because battery technology isn't quite where it needs to be yet, the team decided to go for a hybrid approach. There's a pair of turboprop engines installed on the outboard section of the wing, and a pair of electric motors on the inboard section. For the shorter flights, the plane operates purely on electric power, using two electric motors. The range on fully electric power is 200 kilometers or 124 miles, and that's after a 30 minute charge. Although shorter than current record holders, Hart Aerospace's hybrid system can boost the range by a fair bit. As we covered up to 800 kilometers with 25 or less people, but fully loaded with 30 passengers, the range is 400 kilometers or 250 miles. Passengers can bring luggage weighing up to 25 kilos or 55 pounds. It is interesting because this setup is the best of both worlds and does provide some unique advantages. So the benefits. For one, there's cheaper operating costs. Also, electric motors deliver instant power and this enables takeoffs from shorter runways as short as 1,100 meters or 3,600 feet. Also, this new electric aircraft is noticeably quieter than traditional planes. That may not all sound like much, but in an economic context, this allows the aircraft to operate from smaller airports while carrying more people than ever possible before in an electric plane. Ultimately, this could enhance regional connectivity. The final ES-30 plane could serve smaller communities and possibly be a benefit to tourism. It's a similar way to when America first built highways. Making it easier and cheaper to travel further distances helped regional towns grow. So it's really an aircraft for short sectors, regional flying. And, and airlines, over the years, uh, they, they kind of lost interest in this market segment because the existing airplanes, they are very expensive to operate. And uh, as a result of that, right, they, they moved into larger airplanes, uh, searching for lower, lower costs. And, and uh, they had to drop services from regional uh, airports. We pitched this aircraft basically to airlines that uh, have an interest in reopening those regional routes, something they cannot do with existing airplanes in the market. With my interview with Josh Portlock, he somewhat disagrees that this is the best engineering arrangement. If it's two hours or less, you may as well just put a big battery in. And by taking the engine out, you're saving all that cost, weight, complexity, maintenance issues, um, reliability issues. And a bigger battery means the battery's not being abused as much. So batteries in hybrids are being abused. Like that's the general way to explain it. Now they often go for more expensive chemistries because of that, they need to last longer, and they need to cop a lot more abuse. So that's one downside with hybridization. If you go all battery, it's a big battery that's being sipped, like the electrons are being sipped out of it and they're comfortable, they're not being thrashed. So that's my general view on hybrid, that it's even more extreme in aviation that because the weight sensitivity is so critical, mm. you don't really want the weight of other things converting energy. You really just want the purest form of energy storage going straight from battery to uh, electric motors. So here's the production plan. 
Just like NASA did in the 1960s with their X series of experimental planes, Hart Aerospace aims to gather valuable data from testing. They want to perfect the final design of the ES-30. The first fully electric maiden flight of the Hart X-1 is scheduled for Q1 or Q2 of 2025. They've already finished testing ground procedures and the evaluation of the charging process. Hart Aerospace received a $4.1 million grant by the FAA, and that was to develop their propulsion technology. They now have a research and development hub in California. Malaysian carrier Air Asia has become the latest airline to join Hart's industry advisory board. They're providing inputs into prospective operations and the development of the ES-30. Hart Aerospace says it now has over 250 orders of the plane. They say that they're not looking to replace major airlines, but instead focusing on connecting smaller pocket airports. Those are airports in underserved communities with roughly two acres of land. Following the Hart X-1, Hart Aerospace will develop the Hart X-2, a pre-production prototype incorporating the improvements learned from the X-1's testing. Hart Aerospace aims to bring the ES-30 into commercial service by 2028. If you can't wait that long to experience the Hart X-1, you can actually fly it yourself right now in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. And now, from the air to the sea. Much like the Hart X-1 was a prototype for the ES-30, the Waveflyer is a prototype for an electric boat, and it has a trick up its sleeve. It's a hydrofoiling electric boat. Judging by the initial reactions, people absolutely love it. This clip on TikTok gained over 2.4 million views in a day. The company that made it is called Electronautic, and they're based in Perth, Australia. The Waveflyer may look like a standard two-seater boat at first glance, but what makes it different from other boats is that when in motion, it lifts above the water to travel. The hydrofoiling system is key to making this happen. It drastically reduces drag and increases efficiency, but we'll get to that in a bit. Unlike traditional boats that push through the waves, when in motion, the Waveflyer's hull makes no contact with the water. So some of you must be thinking, wouldn't this be super unstable? Well, of course, this was a major design problem, but it's been worked through, and frankly, the solution is pretty cool engineering-wise. It's called WaveDrive. It's an advanced control system that automatically adjusts the hydrofoil position in real time, and this ensures maximum stability and efficiency, even in choppy water. The WaveDrive is a patented propulsion system we've developed over the last four years. It's twin thrusters, so it's got left and right thruster, electric motors, direct drive, so no gearboxes, no shafts, no complexity like you normally have with uh, engines at the top out of the water and then mm -hmm. all that shafts and gearbox mm -hmm. complexity. Uh, they're immersed in water, so they have built-in liquid cooling, so you don't have any complex cooling circuits, nothing to pump fluid through. So you couldn't think of a simpler, more power-dense motor than a direct drive motor that's directly driving the propeller and it's immersed in water. So that's the start of the, the wave drive. Twin motors with the control surfaces in the tubes, the wings end up being end capped. So the best way to explain that is, you know how commercial airliners have wing tips? Mm -hmm. That's to reduce the amount of turbulence that comes off the wing tip. Well, when you have tubes at the end, it's even better. So the full span of the wing is getting efficiently lift instead of the tips usually getting all these losses. And instead, the, uh, any lift that's generated swells around the tube and then actually goes into the propeller. So it actually gets more efficiently converted back into thrust. Now, this is the last key bit of secret source that we're very confident we've patented and we have a good uh, moat around, is that no one's done an anhedral A-tail at the back of a uh, hydrofoil system. Mm -hmm. And conventionally, what I mean by anhedral, conventionally aircraft and, and hydrofoil craft have wings that point up, and that's called dihedral. So dihedral is designed to self-stabilize. Conventional um, you know, legacy aviation world and even hydrofoil world, you want something self-stabilizing. Actually, if we make it unstable and then actively stabilize it, we have much more control over it. And that's so true for this A-tail. Um, we can actively stabilize and dampen out the stability of the craft much more aggressively than others. You can collectively produce lift. You can differentially produce pitch movement mm -hmm. forward and back. You can differentially produce roll movement and even diagonally produce your movements. Mm -hmm. So you actually have the ability to mix these four control surfaces to produce those four degrees of freedom and fly it in any possible combination of direction. So what? Who cares? Why does this matter? Well, a boat floating on top of the water might sound pretty cool, but there's actually more to it when you look at the numbers. Compared to a normal boat that pushes its hull through the water, this method uses 80% less energy. Obviously, that's far less power than traditional boats. But this alone allows the craft to be much faster and have a much longer range than other electric boats. And of course, outboard diesel engines produce a lot of emissions, so being 100% electric puts an end to that. The ride is also smoother, and the craft is virtually silent. 
Electronautic believes that these methods could make electric boats be the go-to solution for clean and efficient travel over the water. So there you have it, a closer look at two specific electric vehicles that aren't electric cars. As battery technology improves, we can all hope to see more of these efforts as time goes on. And I'm all for it, I'm pretty passionate about this. Can't wait to see what the future brings. Just some quick housekeeping before I go. I'll be at the Everything Electric show in Sydney on the 9th of March. I'll be on stage having a fun talk about battery technology and other things with Robert Llewellyn, the founder of Fully Charged. I'll leave a link for tickets below and you can use the code COLDFUSION to get 20% off. There's going to be plenty of other talks at the event, an expo of all things electric, and there'll even be an opportunity to test drive some of the latest EVs. Looking forward to seeing some of you there. Anyways, thanks for watching. My name is Dagogo and you've been watching Cold Fusion and I'll see you again soon for the next episode. Cheers guys. Have a good one. Hey.